Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Megan and today we are going to chat books. Specifically what we read for the month of August. I personally really love to get reading ideas from other homeschool moms, especially ones that I know are books that have been vetted pretty well and things like that because you just never know with book recommendations. So I hope that this video is helpful to you all in your endeavors to find good books for your kiddos to read. Now for reference, my oldest son is 13 he's in eighth grade and then my children go all the way down the line to age four we try to do a variety of books in our homeschool during our morning time i typically will try to actually interject some picture books and things like that that are younger kid friendly as well as older kid friendly because honestly i enjoy a good picture book as well and i'm an adult so um, so I hope that that will be represented in this video, just a variety of things for different levels. And I'm also going to share some of the books that I have been reading. Um, so let's just dive right into this. So for reference for history, we are studying early modern times. Specifically, we are in the part of history where we are coming out of the exploration and we're more so into the colonization part of history. So we are using BiblioPlan, which takes a look at world history, but it also does focus on U.S. history as well, which I actually really love having the two of those things combined and intertwined. It gives really good like reference points for understanding history as a whole. And so some of the books will represent that in the fact that we are doing um, different read alouds or uh, picture books and things like that to go along with our history. Uh, some of the books are just quality books that I want my kids to read and some go along with their other curriculum, whether it be their writing curriculum through IEW or um, things like that. And so I'll explain that as those come about. This video is hopefully not going to feel too disjointed, but I did film a section of this video separately because we had a lot of library books that had to be turned in. So that portion will look a little bit different than this part in the end of the video. So I'm going to take a second now and just dive right into some of the things that my kids are finishing up here now at the end of August when I'm filming this video. And by the time this video comes out, they will have finished the book or almost finished it at that point. So the first book is um, Tornado. This is actually part of the readers for Sunlight. I think the third grade readers for Sunlight. And a couple of my boys are actually reading through this. The next book is the is one that my eighth grader is actually reading, and that is The Magician's Nephew. And this is the first book in the Narnia series. So this is like before the wardrobe. It kind of gives the background of where the wardrobe originated from in the first place. And this actually goes along with his IEW Riding Through Narnia series. And so he is really enjoying this as well. The next book goes right along with our history. It was actually a suggested read in our history. And my daughter, who's in third grade, is reading this one. This is from the Daughters of Faith series, and it is The Captive Princess. It is about uh, Pocahontas. If you have never read any books from the Daughters of Faith series by Cindy, oh, is it Cindy Walt? No, it's Wendy Lawton. Sorry. Um, I highly recommend them. We read one about Harriet Tubman called uh, Courage to Run a couple of years ago, and it was fantastic. She does an amazing job of really like immersing you, making you feel like you're a part of the story, evoking those senses, things like that. So my uh, daughter who's in third grade is reading this one and she is also completing a little, um, this is her watercolor of the cover of the book and she is actually um, doing this 
as uh, like a summary. So every time she reads a chapter, she kind of summarizes it in there and draws a picture and has each one labeled as a, di a different chapter. And I think I got this idea from, I think it was from Little Smith School, and I may be wrong. She posted a reel about it on Instagram, and I was like, oh, that's actually a brilliant idea. And so she's actually really enjoying reading the book that way. It's helping her to retain things really well as well. And um, so that's what she's reading. The next thing is our current family read aloud, which is Walk the World's Rim. And this was a great read to go along with early exploration because it is about three explorers is it three or four? I can't remember. It might be three explorers and a slave. I can't remember off the top of my head. Sorry, guys. Uh, but um, they are taking a journey across part of the U.S. Um, with a boy who is a Native American, and um, it has been really good. We actually were laughing at something the other day, but there are some really sad parts as well. We are not quite halfway finished with this, so we may carry this over into the first week of September. We'll just kind of have to see how much we get through. So we're really enjoying it though. So the next books are just some kind of picture book kind of things. I wouldn't call this a picture book. It's more of an informational book uh, that we got from the library. You wouldn't want to be an American colonist, a settlement you'd rather not start. I love this series of books. They are so much fun and they really uh, have a great connection to history. And this is, um, we have been slowly reading through this one just like a two-page spread at a time. Sometimes we get more than that in. Sometimes we get a couple of spreads in. But uh, it's just a great way to kind of like bring all together what we're learning in history, but then also diving into a few interesting facts along the way. So if you are studying any point in history, look up this series and see if any of these books are available for the particular thing that you're studying because we have used them for years and love them. The next thing is this uh, 1607, A New Look at Jamestown. And this is a really neat book as well. It's just really a great visual book uh, of like artifacts and things like that that they have found uh, from Jamestown and just giving more insight and information into the colony of Jamestown. And so this has been more so something that we have just read bits and pieces of and then looked at the pictures and things like that. So that's how we have used this book. Um, and then the next book is this book called Abuela's Weave. And the reason that we read this book, which we really enjoyed, is because we are doing the On Mission magazine about Guatemala that is from Gentle and Classical Press as part of our morning time. We do it one to two days a week and the, this was one of the suggested reads. I'll share another one like in the next segment that we read as well that was really, really good that went along with that. So we really enjoyed this one. So now I'm going to break off into that next segment where I share the rest of the books that we read this month. There's some really good ones in there so don't go yet. Okay, so I'm going to show you some of the books because a lot of them are from the library and I need to start returning some of them. But these are some of the books that we read toward the beginning of the month of August. Some of them I actually have already returned to the library and so I guess we'll just not share what those are. But I'm going to share as many of the ones as I can that we have read, including picture books, in case you guys are interested in that. So the very first read aloud we did, we are doing Morning Tom 2 from Brighter Day Press. And this is actually one of the read alouds I had on my list. And one of the reasons why I picked to do Morning Tom from Brighter Day Press uh, was because it had some of the read alouds that I had chosen for this year. And so A Cricket in Tom, or The Cricket in Tom Square, sorry, by George Selden. This was our first read aloud as a family. We really enjoyed this one a lot. And then there is like the old school family American entertainment, I think, or family home entertainment, something. That company from when I was a kid made like a cartoon version of this. They've changed the story some, but it was still fun to 
go back and watch that once we finished this. So that was our first read aloud. And the next book was, uh, I, I pronounced it Katja. I'm not sure how you're supposed to say that. The Windmill Cat. So we were learning about the Dutch revolts in history. And this was one of the picture books that was recommended. We actually really enjoyed this one. It was really sweet. My younger kiddos really liked it. Especially it was about how um, a man had this little cat as a pet. Then he got married. And then they had a baby. And the cat ended up going to live out in the windmill. And um, there was a big flood because the dock broke and the cat actually basically saved the baby. And it's actually based on a true story. So my kids really liked this. This was just a fun little read for us one day. The next books are um, about the sun because I'm doing my father's world kindergarten with my daughter and my four-year-old and so we are doing s is for sun so we learned about sunshine and then we read the book wake up sun and we also read moon bear shadow i love the moon bear books and so they had that one so we read those i already returned moon bear shadow but um but there's those we also read henry and mudge i used to love these books when i was little and so we grabbed that one and read it. The next book is Mama and Papa Have a Store. And this was a really neat story. It's actually about some Chinese immigrants that moved to Guatemala and they own a store there. And it's based on a true story of the girl's um, parents' store in Guatemala. And so this was a fun read. We really enjoyed it a lot. We got it to go along with our Guatemala On Mission magazine from um, Gentle and Classical. Sorry, I almost forgot. From Gentle and Classical. And so um, this was a really neat story. I highly recommend this one just to, to read through and kind of gain some perspective. We also got another Moon Bear book, which is Happy Birthday Moon, and also Moon Cake, which I've already returned. The next book is the first independent read aloud of the year for my oldest son. He read Secret of the Andes, and he's just doing like a fun interactive kind of book report thing on Secret of the Andes. And then I am doing kind of reading group style with my two of my sons and my my third grade daughter because she's a more advanced reader. And um, so we did Stone Fox together and they completed just a free unit study that I found um, on Stone Fox. We really enjoyed this one a lot. And highly recommend this book if you haven't read it. And there's also an old school movie that goes along with it. But they did uh, change a lot of what happened in the movie. Which was kind of a bummer because it's a great story on its own. So the next thing we read was The Great Tulip Trade. To also go along with The Dutch Revolts in history. And um, this was actually a really neat story. This is one that we actually own. But it's actually based on true events of how valuable the tulips were in the 1600s in Holland. And so this was a really cool little read for all ages. Then we read Over and Under the Pond. And we used this as part of our Gentle and Classical Nature Study. And I used it also in my Nature Study class at our co-op. And then we also, I love these eyewitness books. So we learned about explorers before the Dutch revolts in history. And so this is just, I, I love like the real pictures of artifacts and things like that. So this was just a, a, what we used as more so a reference book. Okay, so the last thing that I wanted to share with you guys is... Um, some of the books that I have been reading this month. So I shared at one point, just I think I did like a life update or something like that. I don't know. Maybe it was like a 
summer recap. I don't remember. I'll try to link the video down below, but I kind of touched on something that I have started uh, a study that I myself am a part of. It's called the Colson Fellows Program, and it is a an intensive study of Christian worldview and the different worldviews in the world. Uh, it's it's pretty intensive. It's very. Uh, it makes me feel like I'm back in grad school <laughs> many, many years ago. Uh, there's a lot of reading. There's a lot of webinars and interviews and uh, devotions and uh, reading and things like that. I mentioned reading. <laughs> um, and uh, But it's been very, very good. And also meeting in cohort groups. That's the other aspect of it as well. And being a part of, of student-led discussions and things like that. And so it has been very, very fruitful already, and this is just the second month of it. I just remembered I did not grab one of the other books, but it's on my Kindle, so it doesn't matter if I have it or not because it's on the Kindle. So I'm just going to share with you some of the books that we have been reading through. Now, we don't always finish the whole book in the month because normally we're reading four different books at a time and reflecting on certain parts of those books. So this month we had four that we were reading through and some of them we just read a few chapters or parts out of and then uh, one of them we read half of. And the one that we read half of so far is this one right here called Making Sense of Your, of Your World, A Biblical Worldview. And this book, um, the first couple of chapters, whew, it was a little tough. Like I was like, how am I going to make it through... Um, 170 ish pages of this book. Uh, once you get past the first couple of chapters of this book, it actually gets really, really interesting. It dives into each type of worldview, examples of it, how they can be refuted, all of those different things. Uh, it's very informational. Um, and so that is one of the books that I have been reading. The next book is one that we read a few chapters from, and that is J.I. Packer's Knowing God. Now, I really love J.I. Packer, and um, I actually read one of his other books this year. I think it was Evangelism and the Sovereignty of God, I think is what it was called. Um, but this is very, very good. I highly recommend it. And I'm just a few chapters into it. So, um, that was one of them. Um, and then the next one we read several chapters of, and that is Why You Think the Way You Do, The Story of Western Worldviews from Rome to Home. This is a very historical look at how worldviews change in a culture and society, how we got to where we are today, starting with the Roman Empire, and it is very insightful, very, very good. Uh, the author of this book is Glenn Sunshine, and he was a professor of history for, I think, uh, I don't even know how long. Uh, he's a retired professor of history um, and very well uh, thought of in that aspect. So um, this has been really, really good. I actually have to lead the student-led discussion this next month at our cohort, and this is actually the the text that I chose to lead the discussion on. And um, so that's a very good one. Okay, and then the fourth book for the Colson Fellows that I have been reading this month, it is called Confronting Injustice Without Compromising Truth, 12, Chris 12 Questions Christians Should Ask About Social Justice. So that is the one that I am currently reading. Um, I'm just like, in the very first chapter, and I'm, I'll be done with it though here pretty soon, like because we just have to read the first few chapters of it. So, this is what that book looks like if you're interested in that one. Um, it is really good so far, what I have read, and I can't wait to dive in deeper. So, some of these books for the month of September, I will have to read more chapters of, and then I think we're adding another one. But it, this is just a really interesting subject that I am becoming very passionate about. Apologetics is something that I've always wanted to instill in my children. Uh, being able to stand up and defend their faith, uh, to stand firm in it when it is questioned, uh, and to know why they believe what they believe. I think that's extremely important. Um, 
And to go beyond that, this is just kind of taking that mindset to the next level of instilling in them in a world, in a culture, in a society where the um, worldview is constantly changing and we're bombarded by so many at times, so many different worldviews and how that can make us, when we're young especially, uh, you know, when our kids go to college or they begin their own step out into the world, are how are we going to arm them to stand firm in what they believe when they're going to be infiltrated with the current worldviews around them. And so this is something that I'm becoming very passionate about that I want to know more myself on how to engage the world in the way that Christ would want us to in a loving way, but in a way that still stands firm in truth. Um, and so that's why this whole program is really important to me. Um, so most of my reading <laughs> that I will be sharing in these videos, sorry, I'm looking up if there was any other books that I had read this month. So that is mostly what I will be reading over this next year is books along these lines and kind of giving my thoughts on them. And so I hope that you find this helpful. I, I would encourage each of you that are watching this um, to explore this as a subject that is very important in our parenting, especially in the homeschool world, because, you know, as parents, we value the fact that our children don't have to deal with being infiltrated quite as much at such a young age with what's going on around us. But at the same time, it is our duty as their parents to arm them in a way where they can stand firm because the reality is is that yes while they're in our home we can quote unquote shelter them from those things and i think in some aspects sheltering is not a bad thing you know we we should want to shelter our kids from a lot of what's going on in the world christian or not and um but with that as christian parents and um whether you're a homeschool parent or you're not, uh, we need to arm our kids in a way like to be able to stand firm because they're not always going to be in our home and we can't always shelter them. And if they live a life where they are sheltered all the time in our homes and they don't know how to respond when they are inundated with the world around us, then that's a huge disservice to our kids. So I just want to encourage you with that. Encourage you in the sense that I want to encourage you to step out and start to dive into this subject. How you can naturally bring up these conversations with your kids. Because if we are diving into this and how we can engage the culture in a loving way that still stands firm... Um, then we then can in turn do the same with our kids. And I think where the problem is, is a lot of times we don't know how to do that ourselves. And so I just want to encourage you that this be a subject, an area of study that maybe you uh, kind of dive into. Yeah, so you can tell I'm passionate about the subject. And I have talked a lot about it, but all that to say, okay, so... <laughs> I hope that you found this video helpful. So if you enjoy videos that are sharing books, what we're reading, what we read, what's in our morning basket, like what we're reading in our morning basket in our homeschool, whatever you want to call it. If you enjoy those kinds of videos, I will have a video coming up in early September that is going to be sharing what we are going to have in our morning basket for the month of September. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss it. I would love to know, share down in the comments, what you have read this month, what you're, you're reading in your homeschool. Uh, if you have any questions on books or anything like that, put them down in the comments below and I will see you guys on future videos. Thanks so much guys and have a blessed day.